Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, I discuss the differences between a $100 suit, a $1,000 suit, and I share some secrets about how you get the best suit for your money. In my wardrobe, I have suits that cost over $5,000 new and some that just cost $5. Over time, I've really seen the entire broadband of suit manufacturing. And so I wanna share with you what really goes into it and what you need to know. When I became interested in suits, I really didn't have much money and $100 was a lot. And so I had to really make things go far. The suit I'm wearing today actually cost me only $80, but in fact, it's from A. Caraceni in Milan, one of the most renowned tailors in Italy and the world. New, this suit cost over $5,000, but I just got it for 80. And if you keep watching that video, I'll share with you how I scored that deal. So now it's time for you to understand the key differences between a $100 suit and a $1,000 suit. First, let's focus on the $100 suit. This is a suit such as from Joss A. Bank, H&M, Men's Warehouse, you name it. They're all pretty similar. Basically, it is a completely machine-made suit that is sewn together in two to three hours max, and there is no handwork whatsoever. When it comes to suits, hand sewing is better because it's more flexible and it adapts to your body more easily. And so, especially for a jacket, you always want more handwork. A hundred dollar suit is made of very cheap fabric and cheap lining. That means that it's usually stretched with polyester, with nylon or other artificial fibers. Also, the raw materials, may be cotton or wool that go into that fabric are of the lowest quality possible. The $100 suit may not look that different when you see pictures online, but as soon as you touch it, you can immediately tell the difference between a $100 suit and a $1,000 suit. It simply is stiffer, less comfortable, and you're more prone to sweating in it. A $100 suit has a glued interlining. So what exactly is an interlining and why do you use it? When you start out with fabric, you have a two-dimensional surface. In order to keep it in a three-dimensional shape, you need a second layer and the layer needs to be attached in a certain shape so it stays like this. Think about this of your chest and this being the fabric and this the interlining. Once they're detached, they stay in shape. For the $100 suit, this interlining is of very low quality and it is glued to the fabric. Now, that works in the beginning, but it also acts as an insulator, so you're much more likely to overheat and sweat. Over time, and maybe if you walk through the rain, this interlining will come loose and you will see bubbles forming on your lapels and all over your jacket. That looks really cheap and sloppy and it's the hallmark of a $100 suit. Another aspect of a $100 suit is the lack of attention to details. For example, the buttonholes are first sewn and then cut, not the other way around. That means you see some fraying. Also, the trimmings are usually of low quality. The buttons are plastic, the lining is polyester, and everything is made to remain low on the cost side, but it also means low on the quality. Usually you also don't see any refined cuts, you don't see fine pick stitching by hand, it's all either non-existent or machine-made. The cut of a $100 suit can in theory be as good as the one of a $1,000 suit or a more expensive suit, but in practice that's really rarely the case. More often than not, $100 suits are either very fashion forward with very skinny lapels and you can only wear them a year max before they go out of fashion or they're simply old-fashioned and the cut is boxy and bulky and simply not favorable. In order to create a suit from a piece of fabric you need a pattern and for a $100 suit this pattern is the same for everyone. There's no custom element and so it will never fit you perfectly. That aside, the $100 suit patterns are often not very refined. Let's say they go for a slim suit and a slim silhouette. They make everything slim, even your sleeves. And then you can't really move when you want to do something or you can't wait for a cab simply because it wasn't thought through and it's too tight. Another pet peeve of mine is the deep cut armhole that restricts your movement. And $100 suits 
usually have these in 90% of all cases. In recent years, it has changed a little bit. Sometimes they've adopted more modern cuts and they try to go with details such as working buttonholes, but in reality, they still use the cheap buttonholes and it still looks cheap. So at the end of the day, a $100 suit looks cheap and it feels cheap when you wear it. And if you think about it more, it makes perfect sense. The retailer has to make some money, the sewer has to make some money, and the factory owner who employs a sewer wants to make some money. At the end of the day, there's not much room left to add anything of quality into that suit. The consequence of a $100 suit is that the person who actually sews the garment earns very little and sometimes has to do it under dangerous conditions. So my verdict for a new $100 suit is that it's never worth its money because it's below average on day one and just goes downhill afterwards. Now, if that's the maximum budget that you have, and I used to have that budget, what I suggest you do is you go vintage. Buy used suits simply because you can buy a much higher retail price suit for a lower price, so you get a better quality and you can look great and feel great without breaking the bank. You can find complete suits for 10 or $20 that have hardly ever been worn or were sometimes completely unworn, but are of a really high quality and you can score a huge bargain there. However, not all suits at secondhand stores or vintage stores are of quality. You can also find cheap used suits. So how do you distinguish between a cheap used suit and a quality vintage suit? If you wanna learn more about that, please sign up to our email list here and you will learn more about this specific stuff over time. We also discuss how to build a wardrobe, how to demand quality from crap, and everything you ever wanted to know about suits, garments, and wardrobes. No matter what suit you buy, you always need to understand the quality and the quality hallmarks. So even if you just have a $100 budget, watch the next section of $1,000, because you need to be able to identify a $1,000 suit in a thrift store. All right, let's focus on a $1,000 suit. First of all, you have to keep in mind that the quality can be hugely different for suits that cost $1,000. On the one end, you can have an Armani fashion brand for $1,000, which has more machine workmanship and fashion-forward styling than a suit that is made by a custom tailor in Hong Kong. The time that goes into a $1,000 suit can range from just eight hours to 30 hours. So that's obviously a huge difference and you will also be able to feel that. Generally, $1,000 suits show some amount of handwork. Sometimes they have decorative elements like hand-sewn buttonholes that look really nice. They use a silk thread that is shiny or a cotton thread. They may have machine-made buttonholes, but it looks nice. They may have a interlining that is sewn in by hand or a collar, which makes it softer and fit better and make you look better. Generally, big brands like Canali or Armani or Dolce & Gabbana have less handwork, but a refined style and pattern that you can use. On the other hand, suits from Asia may have more handwork because the labor is less expensive, but the styling can sometimes be a little old fashioned and not really classic and boxy. One big advantage of a thousand dollar suit is the fabric quality. At that price level, you can actually get a decent quality cloth that lasts, is soft and comfortable on your skin, and drapes well on your body. The biggest advantage of a $1,000 suit over a $100 suit is the interlining and the construction. Where the $100 suit has a glued interlining, the $1,000 suit has a half canvas or full canvas interlining. So what does that mean? A half canvas is actually sewn to the fabric and it's usually made of materials such as horsehair or cotton or wool. And that way it's more breathable. So you don't overheat, you're less likely to sweat and it moves with you on your body. So it's more comfortable. To save on cost, this form of interlining is only used on the upper part of your body, such as your chest. And it's glued at the bottom part of your jacket. Full canvas means that the interlining is sewn throughout your jacket, and it's the best version you can get. At a thousand dollar price point, usually these canvases are sewn by machine and not by hand, even though hand sewing would be better, but it's very time intensive 
and for $1,000, you have to make some trade-offs. Overall, a $1,000 retail suit will not give you the best of everything. You either can get something with more handwork that is a little more comfortable and lasts longer, or maybe something that is more machine-made with a more refined cut, but you have to kind of compromise on the fabric. If you're now interested to learn more about suits and other garments, shoes, and how to put them together, I urge you to sign up here. This is different from our regular email list and specifically for people interested in wardrobe building. No matter if you spend $100 or $1,000, this little secret has helped me to save a lot of money and to get quality suits. When I walk into a store and look at suits, the first thing I do is I flap up the collar and look at the stitching. If it is machine sewn, I move on, especially in a vintage store. If it's hand sewn, I take the jacket off and take a closer look. I do this because a hand sewn collar indicates a very high quality. If I go into a vintage store with 300 suits, there are probably only gonna be three to five suits that are hand sewn. With this method, I can quickly go through the entire store and look at the ones in my size and determine if it's worth staying there or not. If the collar is hand sewn, Chances are it's a high quality garment and it deserves a second look and you can use the hallmarks I described in this video to identify if you should buy it or not. High quality suits are often just a little more expensive than well-known used brand suits or even cheaper suits that are more modern simply because the price range is very limited in those stores. So even if you buy a new suit, you can utilize that same method to look at the existing quality when somebody wants to sell you something. Now that you know the key differences between a $100 and a $1,000 suit, stay tuned for a more detailed video about $500 versus $5,000 suits.